Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here, and I got something really neat today. These, you know, <laughs> there's been a race to show the world's smallest quadcopter uh, and also the world's smallest hexacopter. Here's the newest contender for world's smallest hexacopter, even smaller than the MJX X900. This is the FAE FY805 hexacopter. Now, you notice I got two different ones here. T Mart was uh, nice enough to send me. Uh, both versions of this that comes in both in green and in blue so I'm going to be actually flying both of these today that gives me a chance to to demonstrate additional capabilities of the uh, hexacopter before its battery fails <laughs> or after its battery fails I'll just go into the next one um, what it has is this you can adjust the different rates of this quad or this hexacopter by pressing this button here you can do flips by pressing this button here and then telling it which direction to flip Additionally, it has headless mode, which you activate by pressing this button here. Um, I don't know if it has one key return. It does not say that it has one key return in the uh, listings for these uh, hexacopters, but uh, I will try pressing the other buttons just to see if one of these just might be a hidden Easter egg type of uh, deal that you'll often find on these quadcopters and hexacopters by playing around with the buttons. Uh, additionally, uh, it does have, of course, this is mode 2, so this is throttle, and this is yaw control, and this is pitch, and this is roll control, and these buttons here are trim buttons for pitch and roll. Um, these other trim buttons are not listed as being anything other than controlling the headless mode for this particular one here. As you can see, the controller is also a carrying case for the hexacopter, which is pretty dang neat. You can take this to school, of course. and show off at school with you, or at work if you if you care but uh, looking at this little hexacopter um, it's very similar to the little micro quadcopters you see out there except it has two additional arms making it a hexacopter uh, the control or the uh, charging um, port or board if you will is uh, slightly different than others that you see it's uh, neither it's not a recess port it's a little board that sticks out and it uses somewhat of a uh, I'm starting to see this more and more on uh, these micro quadcopters this little uh, board slide on board that you attach the connector to it does have an on off switch right here and of course as with most nano quadcopters and nano hexacopters the battery is internal and cannot be uh, replaced out in the field you need to recharge it um, so Overall, pretty neat looking. I like the idea of the case. The case feels good in the hand for controlling it, but uh, what we need to see is how will this thing actually fly. Now, I have a breeze coming from my right shoulder over here, so we are going to go into higher rate than beginner's rate, starting off with. It does have nice lights. Red in the back. Let me go into the shade a bit and show you these lights. But um, we have red in the back green on the sides and appears to have blue in the front so this looks like it would be a great night flyer and I'm gonna to have to try to give it a shot tonight by flying it I will start off on a flat level surface and turn on the transmitter and bind it to the hexacopter I think you gotta go up twice no do I have it turned on and I guess I didn't uh, yeah it turns itself off, folks, so that's a nice feature. If you exit, oh, there we go. Maybe I didn't turn it on. Okay, turning on the transmitter again, binding it. Okay, we should be good to go. Let's go to higher rate. So it has beginner and expert only. It is tiny. <laughs> and it has insane yaw at expert rate. Going back to beginner rate. Let's bring it down so you can see it. Gotta do some flips with this. Okay, let's show that yaw rate. And saying yaw uh, when you give it full, but it's proportional. So I'm still at an expert rate, so you can you can fly it with that, which is good. Flip, flip, flip. Good flipper. So this is cool. You know, what I'm saying is um, I'm an expert right, right now, but it's it's controllable. Let's bring it in closer again. As you can see here, it is controllable. Okay, slow yaw with you, but if you want, just give it full yaw and it does that. 
<laughs> which is cool. Okay, the headless mode. I forgot which direction we were pointing in. I guess it was pointed in that direction. Actually, this is a cool flyer in an expert rate in a headless mode. Left, back. Forward, right. Forward. Going upwind. We'll flip. No, it won't flip it. It won't flip in headless mode. Coming out of headless mode. Let's try one key return if there is a one key return. I press to the right, and yes, it appears that there might be a headless or one key return. Let me drop it for a second here, folks, so I can reset that headless mode bearing. But I pressed to the right, and it appears it made a beeping noise, so that means something activated. How about the other? That makes a beeping noise, too. Oh, that's, that's trim. So it appears to have yaw trim. <laughs> Even though it says it doesn't. How can you tell? Well, I press it, and you hear that loud beep there. That tells you that's uh, center trim position. So this does have uh, yaw trim. Appears to have yaw trim. Let's find that. Okay, rebinding. That's our headless mode bearing. There should be. Turning on the transmitter. Going right into headless mode. Going to higher rate. And pushing forward down the headless mode bearing, pushing back. Yeah, it doesn't have one key return. That was trim. But the headless mode on this comes in handy flying outdoors, folks. Especially on breezy days. I like that. With these little nanos and micros. Because that helps you fight that wind going to higher rates. Especially if they have high um, yaw rate. I'm going back upwind again. <laughs> Just use the headless mode to fly it at those high yaw rates. So this is the green version. Nice little hexia. Yeah? Again, the new newest contender for world's smallest hexacopter. The FAY 805. And you can actually take the school with you. And again, I'm going to be flying the uh, little blue version right after this. Let's go see what the range is of this. Let's see if we can make it out to the uh, other side of the field. Let's and back. I'm about 30 meters, 40. What's the width of a soccer field, folks? The 50 meters, because I'm right at the edge of it. Pulling back now on the stick. Really hard to see. <laughs> if I didn't have endless mode, I wouldn't be able to do this. Okay, I guess I'm about 30 meters away. Twenty, maybe about ten. But it made it to the edge of the soccer field, so its its range is reasonably good. <laughs> really good range. I don't think you need it though, because it was almost invisible at the other end of the field here. I'm still controlling it in headless mode, folks. If you want to do this, you got to use headless mode. Okay, I think that's about it. Is there any more oomph out of you? Let's come out of headless mode and see if there's any more flight time out of you. Well, the lights are blinking, so yeah, that should be it. Uh, still got a little bit of oomph. Let's fly it normally now. Oh, uh, its battery is dying. I can tell right now. And that's all she wrote. So, that's a flight of the green one. Let's get uh, continue flying. This time we'll use the blue one, see how that performs. Hope you enjoy that one's flight. Let me turn this one off, put it back in its case.
and adjust its propellers, folks, so you don't break them when you put them in this case, because they got to be just right to close this case door. It should be that should be good. Okay, taking the other one out of my pocket, <laughs> opening its case, and I charged this one also last night. Let's put it on a reasonably flat surface, which should be about this one here. Turning on its transmitter. Or turning it on and then turning on its transmitter. That will be our headless mode bearing. It's this one's turn. Going to higher rate. I'm going to do headless mode because of the wind. This one too spins. <laughs> but it loses its headless mode bearing when you do that. I'm going to land it for a second, folks. This one appeared to have lost uh, the, set, the direction that I had set it when I did that spin. I don't know if that's true for all of them, but we'll find out. We are going to rebind it. Let's go over to the flat surface of the concrete here. Where's that on-off switch on this thing? There it is. This one looks flat. A level. I'm going to point it off in the direction of the pole on the other end of the field. Turn on the transmitter. Okay. I'm going right to headless mode. And a higher rate to fight the wind. You know what it would be better is if I would set the headless mode in the direction where the wind's coming from. Okay, the wind seems to have died down here. Let's just go over here and activate the high yaw rate. I want to see how long this thing will spin. <laughs> this probably looks cool as hell at night, huh? Now, does it remember headless mode was that direction? Nope, it's all lost it. <laughs> it thinks it's... Okay. Headless mode does it, does, it does a wobble, but <laughs> it's dizzy. In other words, did you see that, folks? From doing those spins? It was doing a, a toilet bowl wobble, similar to what you see with a GPS quadcopter. So those spins confuse it. We're not going to fly headless mode, or no, we're not going to do spins. But we are going to fly headless mode. Continue flying because of the wind. Actually, no. No, let's start it off and fly normal. Just in a higher rate. Let's just fly normal now for the rest of this flight. Let's do some flips. I didn't do enough flips yet. It's a flipper. Flipping, flipping hexacopter. <laughs> Gonna do barrel rolls. Well, that there's a hawk there. Let's see if he goes after this. I got two of them. Oh my god, he is going after it! <laughs> Hold on, folks. I don't want to lose my hexy. He saw that and is looking at it hungrily. Oh, what the hey? Let's see if he goes for it. Let's go up after him. Will he go after it? I'm watching him and watching it. I'm watching him watching it. Watching him, watching it. He's going after it! No, he's not. <laughs> he's going away. Good. <laughs> that would have been interesting to get on video, wouldn't it? If that hawk would have went after that. He's a big hawk, too. Yeah, we got those out here in the desert. Okay, let's do another thing. Let's... Let's see if it do a hand toss. Let's get that out of there. 
Can it do hand tosses without hitting the ground? We'll find out here shortly. Up. Yes, you can hand toss it. So, all in all, you know, it's it's a neat little hexi. Similar, it flies. Um, same as all the other nanos and in this size and class, it's just that it's a hexacopter. So, overall, let me land this for a second. So, overall, you know, it's it's a fun, fun little hexi, but very similar to what we've seen before, but it's... <laughs> It's a hexi, so you can claim that you have the world's smallest hexacopter currently. I'm sure that's going to change in about a month or two as others hit the market. That seems to be the case with this technology. It changes so rapidly, you know. New things hit the streets so many, you know, every month there's something new. And this is currently what's new. Okay, Quadcopter 101, signing out. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the flight.